Oops, I thought I was taking pictures. <laughs> That's gotta look really dorky. It's still recording. What the heck? I think my phone's broken. Shoot. <laughs> Come to Minnesota, they said. It'll be fun, they said. We'll plow your driveway, they said. <laughs> no, they didn't say that. So brutal. Sure is pretty though, isn't it? Take a look behind me. Gorgeous. And the snow on my feet. Deep. Deep, deep, deep. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Welcome to winter in the Arctic land of northern Minnesota. I really want to be working in there. So, not happy. That's pretty though. Oh jeez, so deep now. Look at that. Look at that boy. Look at that deep snow boy. You need some snowshoes. What's wrong with you? Uh, welcome. To the Arctic land of Minnesota. Listen, you can hear my voice echo. Hello. Crazy. So it's been like this, snowing for like this for what, how many days now? <laughs> how many days? Oh, gross! I have snot in my nose. Sorry, guys. Um, how many days? I don't know. If I missed two days of workouts. Not cool. And of course, the shop isn't getting any company in there. And his icicles hanging down from the lights. That's crazy. Anyways, just want to give you a little brief update. The storm continues here. Sure is pretty though behind me, isn't it? I mean, it's pretty if I do this. No, I'm not saying I'm pretty. I'm saying the Arctic. Oh, the wind just took my breath away. Anyways, guys, stay warm. I'll go back inside before I get frostbite. <laughs> crazy and there's like nobody around me we're like out here by our, this is this truly the wind this truly is survival survival training at its finest good thing the military prepared me <laughs> what a dork okay, climb over this mountain climb over the mountain all right guys i'll talk to you later i'll see you in a few minutes i'll come, I'll come back out here I'll come back out here and see if my trail's filled in in an hour or two.
This next part's about uh, the wireless mic system that a subscriber got for me. Really appreciate it. Love it. Having trouble getting it to work for a while. Now I figured out the system. But I tried using this um, wired cord that I used before to attach to the wireless mic. And I realize now that that had a button on it that you're supposed to switch when you're not using it on the smartphone. And I didn't switch it. That's why it didn't work. So I'm going on and on, talking this whole time, and you guys can't even hear me. Like, right now I'm talking about the, the workbench I'm about to build. You got no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, I figured it out, and we actually got that wired mic working in the next few videos ahead. So. And yes, I absolutely made that shot. Not only did I go to um, Home Depot, I also went to my um, local hardware store where I get these torque screws by the pound and they have a variety of different lengths and that's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Anyways. I don't think I'm going to go through word for word what I've talked to as I build this uh, workbench. I'm going to just sip through it real quick just to show you that I that it's part, it is part of the uh, truck camper project. I also cover it in another video called how to build a workbench in under two hours something like that. It's on my channel and it's under the category or the playlist of uh, the big DIY guy. So go check that out if you want to know step by step how to build a workbench. This workbench is going to be, what is that, uh, 2 feet by 8 feet. So all I did is cut that OSB. Remember, that's the used piece of OSB. It's a good use. Putting it to good use because at this point it's got stains on it, cuts on it, nicks on it, drill marks on it. So it's perfect. Use it for the workbench top and the bottom shelf of the workbench. So here's this trick that I was talking about before where you use your cut piece and you want all the pieces to be the same. So you put your cut piece on the top 
and then you mush, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh your saw blade right up against the edge, its edge, like so. And then mark it. Yeah, so I'm explaining to you right now, but the microphone sucks, so I'm just going to speak over it. So you mush it up against the saw blade, nick the uh, saw, excuse me, nick the wood a little bit, so you can see where the blade's going to go. Remove the other piece, and then cut through both pieces. I think I can cut to three pieces at once with this saw. Yeah, and I put the interior studs at two feet. That gives me something to um, screw down any equipment I want to put on the workbench. If I put them about every 16 to 16, sorry, every 18 to 24 inches, that usually gives me um, the perfect amount of space in between the tools. You'll see, like when I mount um, my new Ryobi um, sliding miter saw, when I mount it to the workbench, I actually mount it right into or screw it right into the two by fours. guys by now you know me well enough to know that I'm going to drill pilot holes um, especially in the 2x2's but I also do it in the 2x4's I feel like it stops it from splitting especially in the cold wood seems to split more in the cold I've noticed man look at the the winds blowing the, the door back and forth if you look in the background you see the space at the bottom of the door flipping open and closing ha, I just dropped that yeah, now I'm going to use a clamp to hold it in place, so I'll keep dropping it. I'm sure you guys know this trick already, but whenever you're doing a rectangle or a square and you want to make sure that it's actually square and all the angles are at 90 degree, ang 90 degree angles, um, you pin the corners first. So you pin one corner and then you go to the opposite side and pin the other corner and then go to the other side and pin the other corner and you can do the fourth corner as well but usually I found that by the time you do the um, third corner if all of them are square then you're golden it's not going to be um, out of sync or askew if uh, all three corners are um, square little trick of the trade
as you can see I'm using a framing square to mark out where all those uh, two by fours are and then those lines will stay on there so that when I want to drill uh, or mount uh, a tool onto it I know exactly where the two by fours are and I'll have to measure So I've made well over six of these bad boys. I love these workbenches. And it took me a few times to figure out the best way to do it. But I found that if I make the shelves, the table and the shelf first, um, before I start screwing all the legs in, it works out so much better. And then all I did is flip, you saw what I did, I flipped over the bench, sorry, the table, and, and I put the pre-made uh, plastic reinforced uh, legs, edges, corners, whatever you want to call them, and screwed them in first. And I'm going to do all four, and then I'll flip it over and work on the top. So this will actually be the bottom, the bottom shelf. Okay, the process is repeated for the for the uh, top or the tabletop, whatever you want to call it, the top of the bench, with the studs down in the middle every two feet. I'm marking it out right now. I'm not going to show you the whole process, plus the footage is lost. I don't know where it went, but I don't need to show it to you again. It was the same thing as doing the bottom one. All I did was uh, attach the OSB, and now I'm going to attach the uh, top bench into the actual corners and using those Torx screws. Really easy, not too hard. I think um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Okay guys, real quick, uh, I need to go in and take a break. I'm gonna move around all these obstacles here. Um, so this was the old uh, saw horse system. I use zip ties because you couldn't screw into the plastic because the plastic would break. So it wasn't stable enough for a uh, scaffolding. So I built these uh, workbenches before and you saw in the video that how to, how to do it. It's really easy, it takes less than two hours to do it. Um, but from what I remember, and I'll look it up, but for now I'm gonna say that I recall the advertisement, and I've built like six of these things. I need to build them and sell them. You can make them any size you want. It's all by two by fours, and then you can use OSB, you can use plywood for the top, and actually there's a place here for a middle shelf. And the one I have in a couple items storage have middle shelves on them. But this is going to be used as scaffolding first. So I kept it eight foot long, two by fours, so two by four braces in between every two feet. So it should be strong enough. It said eight, 800 pounds to 1,000 pounds. So it definitely can hold up two people. But uh, knock that out real quick. Just under two hours, just over two hours, something like that. And um, I've got these other braces in here that I'm going to use simple scaffolding for the other side so um, yeah I mean if I could afford another bench like this I would the set costs about $80 so not too cheap and then of course you gotta buy the wood as well but um, yeah I think the scaffolding will be, will be great it's the floor is not even so I'm gonna have to go ahead and 
See that? I'm gonna have to put some shims under there because that's where the drainage is right there. So of course the floor is not even level rather. All right guys, that's it for today. Actually, that's it for just now. Last night it warmed up the crazy warm. Um, got up to 47 degrees at night. So I'm wondering if it's gonna do the same thing tonight. For now, I need the heating pad because I'm hurting really bad from that building. All right guys, I will talk to you later. Have a good night. night. Be good to each other, don't forget. Love y'all, bye. to check out my new scaffolding before I do I need to get rid of that wobble it's uh, enough to cause especially with the nerve damage in my left leg enough to cause me to fall off that thing real easy so I get a piece of plywood the 3 8 scrap and shove it under there um, that's not it boy other side come on use your brain think about it see the depth in the floor there you go there you go now she's steady. Too easy. So you guys remember from the last episode before I made the workbench, I was making these cross braces for in between the two by threes. I'm going to continue that, but as I was up there, I realized that there's nothing on the other side. I don't want to have to keep moving this workbench all the way around to the side when I need to go back and forth to work. So I'm going to go ahead and build the super duper heavy duty shelf that came with the workbench and that is guaranteed to hold a lot of weight too. I don't remember exactly the top of my head. And I do have a couple extra pieces from project from before so I'm going to make a extra long extra heavy duty uh, shelving system and we're going to use this scaffolding for the other side of the, of the truck camper.
doing you ask well it's pretty simple if you think about how I built this with the angles the what is it uh, eighth inch plywood or 16 or 3 16 plywood that I'm using um, don't have a table saw so I didn't cut it on an angle so all I'm doing right now is taking off the burrs and the, the dips and the crevices and the basically I'm making it totally flush with the 2 by 3 edge so I can put my um, piece of plywood up there, which is what's going to happen next. Got it? Good. Or what would my dad just say? Get it? Got it? Good.
so this bucket has a bunch of scrap wood in it basically it's just extra weight to push the bow out of the plywood so I can go inside the camper and trace around the frame uh, the opening for the max air vent <laughs> wondering why I'm standing here plotting and planning so much is trying to decide about the opening for the air conditioner. That's right where the air conditioner needs to go, but I don't have the air conditioner, so I don't know the exact opening. I will go ahead and decide to um, frame it out based upon the one that's on Amazon that I'm going to buy. In the meantime, I'm going to cut one more 2x3 put in there um, temporary and footage is lost but I do the same trick where I bend the nail and attach it and I remove it later to frame out the air conditioner attack of the killer ladybugs they're everywhere go away ladybugs we don't want you here.
So I need to yell! Just kidding. Man, you know I'm having some serious issues with microphones. Anyways. Hey! Turn the music off or pause or something because, you know, YouTube is going to have a fit and penalize you for some copyright issues. Pause. 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 Thank you. Alright, let's try this again. Sketchy sketchness. I call me the redneck sketcher. <laughs> oh, oh, speaking of sketchy. <laughs> okay. Hey.
who wants to give a little shout out for, <laughs> for me? Because I'm about to attempt to do this by myself. So I've got a glue gun. You know, there's the glue gun over there. The scaffolding I made doesn't go up high enough. So I kind of have to get up here on the on the actual two by threes and uh, reach with the glue gun. So I got to use the glue gun, get that done, and then I have to flip this over exactly, pretty much almost where it is. Basically, it's going to split that two by three in half, and then uh, it's going to land on all that wonderful work I did. Anyways, I feel a little sketchy, so. Um, Shout out prayer would be appreciated. Why, why am I saying shout out prayer? Anyways, pray for this uh, big DIY guy. Love you guys. Here goes nothing. Just in case I die, I love you all. <laughs> Peace. Okay, before I break out the infamous glue gun and start installing that piece of plywood, that I cut the vent out for. You can see it's flipped over right there waiting. I wanted to show you what it looks like close up with the um, braces in and with the frame out. Excuse me, with the frame for the max fan. So you can see it adds a lot of stability to the roof with those braces in there.
reason my phone's not charging slash my camera. Anyways, um, we go inside and let it charge and take a little rest. But I wanted to show you guys, um, I didn't die, I didn't get hurt, and I got the uh, first piece on. As you know, I already cut those pieces. That middle piece isn't cut yet because I'm still, I still have to frame out where the air conditioner is going to go, which is uh, pretty close to where those tools are. In the middle though. So I'm actually measuring out that piece, this piece right here, the center piece. But that is solid like a rock, son. Anyways, I'm really happy with the way this, this is turning out. Um, I was up there, my 230 pounds is holding just fine up there, the way I'm building it. So uh, I'm glad I went with it. I think it's 3H plywood. I'm going to stop talking to my batteries about the die. And I don't want my phone to whole shut down, the whole, the whole shutdown thing. Anyways, thank God, well, they didn't fall, but thank God that um, I got that awesome uh, uh, staple gun. I can give you a review on that later. I'm really impressed with it so far, though. I can give it a little more, little more work done with it, and then I'll give you uh, a total, uh, hey, there's my beautiful woman coming in right now. Hey, baby. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? <laughs> Anyways, so the staple gun saved me a lot of work today because you can imagine how many screws I'd have to put in there and save weight because the screws weigh a lot too. All right, guys, I'm out. I got to go take a little break. All right. Good night. Bye. Love you guys.
sure you guys realize that this is the centerpiece of the entire roof where the air conditioner is going so it's going to have two openings because you got the vent on the one side above the cooktop and then right in the center of the whole camper basically is the um, opening for the air conditioner so after doing some research I found the air conditioner I need for the truck camper and it's on Amazon and according to Amazon which I probably shouldn't trust Amazon <laughs> according to Amazon um, the opening is 14 by 14 so I'm gonna cannibalize it's called cannibalize 
cannibalize these pieces over here because I'm out of 2x3s and I'm gonna make a uh, frame for the air conditioner 14 by 14 out of 2x3s just like I did for the other openings see my screw gun over here I'm having to move over these two by threes and that's what I told you before I was going to have to do is um, and I'm not going to finalize everything I'm going to attach these two by threes but I'm not going to glue down the piece of, uh, of plywood yet because I need to know exactly where it's going and the wind is blowing again crazy wind of course can't just be a normal soft little breeze. It's gonna blow all this trash into my shop. Knock trees down. This is Minnesota. Yeah, that's it. It's Minnesota. This can go.